Welcome back to Shadowrun Hong Kong. Right. Back from a mission. Made friends with some other Shadowrunners. Sadly, one of them didn't survive, but three of them did. All in all, pretty good mission. Um, I got some karma to spend. I got uh, payment to collect. Which, let's collect payment. And then, it's off to see Auntie Chang. She's got news for me, and she's awfully excited. I think she's tracked down the plastic-faced man. And I'd like to have a little face-to-face -face with him. And by face-to-face, -face, I mean I'd like to put a bullet in his head. But not until after I learn everything he knows. Let's post some uh, pay data. Uh, 150. From that, not bad. Hey, Rubik, I was able to cut out the proprietary bits of the files we recovered that work a few that work a few new yen. But there was a lot of junk that and none of the buyers wanted. I decided to archive the leftover paperwork, requisition orders, etc. Nothing special, but I figured I'd keep it on hand. Good work, is. Let's post some pay data. Experimental Aries research. And the Shangri La's guest reservation list. And let's claim payment for the Aries prototype run. Your payment is attached. I confess that I am very pleased with your work. It's not every runner who could have pulled off a job with this magnitude. Well done, Lou. I didn't pay attention to how much I got. How much money do I have? Ah, uh, that's a good bit. I have almost three grand. I will spend some karma. Can I do what? I'm in conversation. Oh, because I'm interacting with the computer. Now I can spend my karma. Okay, let's see. I've been spending it on my spellcasting the last couple times, so I'm not gonna... I could dump more into willpower, and I may eventually, but... Let's, let's get something else. More body wouldn't be a bad thing. Uh, I could get quickness and ranged combat. really think I want to pump up my shotgun too much more. This only increases my chance to score a critical using this. Quickness will help everything. Both my um, both attacking and to, uh, defending. Dodge. So let's do that. I think next time I get points I'm going to increase my body up to 6. But for now let's get a little bit quicker. A little bit better with my gun. I don't use it very often, but it is useful if I'm on a dragon line. Because, man, casting while on a dragon line can be very detrimental to my teammates sometimes. I have some pretty powerful spells now. I'm not going to go shopping just yet, because there might be better stuff available after I talk to Auntie Chang. Plus, you don't keep Auntie Chang waiting, you know? Kindly Chang is in the midst of emptying two plastic shopping bags when you enter. She places the contents in a pile on her mahjong table. Two liquor bottles without labels, a box of her thin black cigars, an assortment of individually wrapped gourmet chocolates, and a large caliber pistol with electrical tape wrapped around its crimp. Ah, good. You're here. She finishes with the plastic bags, then throws them to the floor. It seems like forever since we saw each other. Welcome back. Was your trip worthwhile? Her voice is filled with a, ru with a rusty energy. Yes, my darling, yes. I met with several contacts within the network who referred me to others in neighboring cities. 
Regardless of how far technology moves forward, tradition demands that some things be handled face to face. I have returned with information that will lead you to the plastic faced man, the man who killed Raymond Black. Excellent. While you were gone, we uncovered a relationship between Josephine Sang and Raymond Black. The triad woman's eyes narrowed. Did you? And what is it that you uncovered? The man who raised us isn't Raymond Black. He's Edward Sang, the son of Josephine Sang. You were raised by Josephine's son? Her brows, her brow furrows. That explains where Edward went when he disappeared years ago. Seattle. Any idea why he disappeared? No, just that he went missing after Josephine completely completed rebuilding the walled city. That was in the early 30s. Her face twists into a mask of disgust. You realize what this means, don't you, my sweet? That inbred little goat horde was cold enough to have her own son executed. Even more reason to find the plastic-faced man. What have you found out? Everything you need to move forward. She grabs a bottle and opens it. I know the identity of the plastic-faced man. His name is Lee Tai Lung, and he's an independent contractor. A, trustable, a trusted, deniable asset who handles all of Josephine Sang's more delicate operations off the books and away from the public eye. The plastic-faced man is her shadowy right hand outside of the corporation. Chang doesn't bother with a glass. She takes a long pull off the striking, off the stinking bottle and wipes her mouth with the back of her hand. And I know how to find them, too. I've made contact with an informant broker, Zhao Ji, who works out of an abandoned night market in Shek Kip Mei called the Shing House Court. It's not hard to find. She takes another pull off the bottle. Xiao Ji has gained access to the plastic-faced man's complete itinerary. Where he'll be, who he'll be with, what sort of security he'll have. That works. She grins glassy-eyed. You can use it to perform an extraction. Grab him and find out what he knows. Got it. Go to Shek Kip Mei, look for a night market called Shing House Court, and find an information broker called Xiao Ji. Yes, it's all very straightforward, until it's not. Li Tai Lung has, desig has designated... Is that misspelled or my can I... Anyway, Li Tai Lung has designated himself to be perfect corporate operative. Designed himself, wow, I can't read, himself to be the perfect corporate operative. He's installed a unique piece of hardware, you see. It allocates and compartmentalizes, compartmentalizes client-related memories so that they can be erased upon completion of a job. As an added security measure, this cortical implant will wipe his memory if it detects that he's been captured. So we need a way to circumvent the implant. Exactly. Unless you can find a, unless you can find a way around the cortical implant, you'll have no way to extract the information he has and figure out what happened to Raymond Black. She circles the mouth of the bottle with her fingertip. Now I've done my part in this, my darling. You need to find a way to neutralize that device. Isabel interjects, her voice breaking slightly as she speaks. I know a way. I've heard of something like this before. I met someone in the Matrix who has a, a shirk, who had to shirk a similar memory wipe implant once. It was a requirement for a big job, and she pulled it off. Keep talking. Her handle is Dreamland, and I know where to find her. All that we have to do is to convince her to give up the secret of how she did it. Okay, Isabel and I will go see Dreamland before we hit the information broker. Then we grab the plastic-faced man. No matter who you choose to help you snatch this guy, 
I'm going to be there when you extract information from him about Raymond. Wu crosses his arms across his chest and tilts his head towards you. You got it, Koji? We should all be there. Gobbit, Gobbit's eyebrows arch highly. I know that I want to see this. Very good, my darlings. Now listen to me. After you get what you need from the plastic face man, I want you to end him. You understand? The triad boss taps the table with her finger. I need to send a very clear message that this is what happens when you mess with Kindly Chang's operations, with Kindly Chang's people. Josephine takes Nightjar, I take her plastic faced man. Once you snatch the plastic faced man, Sang will know something is happening, and events will unfold very quickly after that. You'd best close out any pressing business you have before heading to Shek Kip Mei to see Zhao Ji. You understand? Yep, I get it. Once we set the ball rolling on this, there's no turning back. That's right, my darling. No more side jobs, no more dalliances. Kindly Cheng wraps on the mahjong table with an imitation ivory tile. Be sure that your affairs are in order before you head to see the information broker. I got it. I'll do all my other side missions first. I only have one left unless more have magically appeared on my computer. So, let's get some sleepy sleep. And then head on over to Crafty and see if there's anything new going on with her. For the first time since you got to Hong Kong, you wake up feeling well rested and satisfied. Flexing your limbs feels glorious. It's as though you spent hours cramped up in a confined space, and you can finally stretch your legs. You push yourself up and touch your feet to the ground, but something stops you short. Your mouth. Something is wrong with your mouth. Well, let's run my tongue over my teeth. You let your tongue move over your teeth until you reach the problem area, a molar on the upper left side. It feels strange. You apply a little pressure to the tooth and it slides free from its moorings. It's as if nothing was ever holding it in place to begin with. As the tooth comes free in your hand, an image etches yourself, itself in your mind. A great chamber, hazy in form and outline, clouds of red mist that fill the air, perfuming it with salt and copper, great columns stretching up from the ground to pierce the sky, and above it all, the enormous grinding gears of a broken machine. In the distance, you could hear a sound, a desperate, frantic pounding. Something enormous at the door, many somethings, all desperate to get in. Scrabbling and scratching and scraping, but unable to find purchase. The way in is locked. You feel a tremendous sense of accomplishment. You've done it. The others are trapped outside, blind and starving, unable to pass through the door. The chamber and what lies beyond it are yours. A shrill giggling noise fills the air, like a laughter of a small child mixed with the shriveling screech of countless violins. The sound reverberates down your spine like an electric current. The intoxicating aroma of meat fills your nostrils. You have been starving for a thousand years. Soon, it'll be time to feed. Boy, this is creepy. And just like that, it's over. The image fades, dissipating like vapor. Only the tooth in your hand remains. Wow. Well, that was, uh, something. Alright, um, let's go see Crafty. Hey there, still don't have any new information on the Yama Kings or the Dreams. I think we're going to have to wait and see how things shake out. Alright, let's see what you got. Ooh, more powerful spells. Nice, Power Bolt 4. I want that to replace my Power Bolt 3. So let's sell Power Bolt 3 first. Okay, let's buy Power Bolt 4. 
in there. Thank you very much. Now, what else you got? I'm about to arm. There we go. I don't have enough. Wuxing Line Coat. Wuxing Corps developed this coat for their executive magical bodyguards. Rigid plates are concealed between layers of ballistic cloth inside. I'm going to probably buy this after my next run if I can afford it. What other spells are there? Uh, Acid Bolt 3, that's for uh, Shaman. Fireball 3. Flamethrower 4. Damn! I don't have enough intelligence to, use, to grab this one. I don't know if it's... Uh, worth it for me to pick up one point of intelligence for just this spell. Are there any other spells that I need intelligence for? Or for? Petrify. Target loses all AP for two rounds. It cannot attack or move. Last two rounds. Pretty good. Pretty good spell. A lot of AP though. Looks like all this stuff is stuff I've seen before. I could give myself a better shotgun. I bet they have better weapons now. Man, I want that armor. That's the most important thing, just getting that armor. That badass armor. Can't do it now, but will in the future. Alright, thanks, Crafty. Get another job started. Right away. I want that armor. I don't suppose I can claim that pay data yet. Probably not until I get back from the other job. But I can check. Yep. No new messages. Only one job. Add a retrieval. I hope you're enjoying your newfound success in the shadows. I've got another job for you, one that should prove very lucrative indeed. I've been contacted by an employee of the Eastern Tiger Corporation and he needs you to steal some research data and biological samples for his employer. The, the man's name is Tygath Wright. Until recently, he was a researcher on a genetic engineering project. He was cagey with the details, but I gathered, oh, this is the one where I gotta go on the ship. Yep, I remember this reading about this. Let's do this. Who to take? Who to take? I need to dreamland and see. Wait, no, I want to go. Didn't I take the other job? Yeah. I can't do that. I have to go to meet Dreamland first. He won't let me do the other job first. Well, all right, let's go meet with Dreamland. I don't really have a choice. The tenement that Dreamland lives in smells of mold and desperation. The people living here are the kind who don't want to be found. Okay, this is the right place, Rubik. Emily should be in the first apartment. Is she dangerous? She shouldn't be. Emily's a Decker, yes, but she's really more into programming than she is violence. Her handle is Dreamland, after all. 
she quit running last year. Something about some sort of activist activity that she used to be into, and a bunch of big money execs who are holding a grudge. Emily's from Berlin. She moved to Hong Kong after the F state collapsed. The Shock and Wellen, the, the Shock Wellen writer, that's the group that she worked for, were supposed to protect her, but they've got their own problems to deal with. I guess that she decided she'd be safer on her own. I heard about the fall of the F state. It sounded like chaos. That's what I heard too. Experiment and sustained institutional anarchy? Great environment for a shadow runner. But it ended up just like communism did, another pipe dream. The German government gave the corporations the go-ahead to invade, and they forced the anarchists to retreat to the eastern part of the city. Now Berlin's run by the corpse, just like Hong Kong. I bet they wind up building a wall again. Wouldn't put it past them. Anything that we should know before we talk to Dreamland? No clue, really. I've never met her in meat space. Just be your charming self, I guess. I'm sure that everything will work out just fine. I sure hope so. The apartment is no better than the hallway. Empty fast food cups and pack packages of dried snack foods are strewn about the room. In the corner, a box of cat litter sits filled to overflowing. You don't see any cats. There's a patched together matrix terminal sitting on a stack of crates connected to a banged up cyber deck. Within arm's reach of the cyber deck is a 20 something woman with pale white skin, dirty blonde hair, and a bleak expression. Emily looks at the deck slung across Isabel's back. So you're Isabel, huh? I didn't expect. A dwarf? Isabel coughs nervously. Yeah, I get that a lot. No, no, I didn't expect you to be so pretty. The woman has a soft German accent and a dour disposition. I should never have agreed to this, Isabel, she groans. I should have, I should never have even responded to your message. If the oligarch swine who've been hunting me find out where I am. They won't find out from us. Uh-huh. Emily searches your eyes with her own. You can see the intelligence in there, but it's hard to get past her sullen manner. This is the man I told you about. He needs the software that you developed to inhibit your cortical implant. Needs what? Her tone is sharp. Her eyes flash daggers at Isabel. I don't think I should be getting into this. I have a business proposition I'd like to discuss with you. I don't know, man. I'm kind of done with the business. She pulls out a near empty pack of German cigarettes and lights the last one. In case you're not up on current events, I've got a kick line of mercs and bounty hunters after me messing around with the headwear that the sh Shockwell and Ryder installed in me is the last thing in my mind. Look, this is important. I need the software you created so I can find out what happened to my father. Your father, huh? Sounds rough. Is he dead? I doubt it. At least I don't think he's dead yet. That's why this is important. She softens. Been there. Something like that. Like there. It's the ambiguity that'll kill you. She considers for a moment. Okay, give me a minute. Emily grabs her cyber deck and jacks into it. Her jaw goes slack and her fingers hover over the keyboard, tapping keys at a blinding speed. When she finishes, she jacks out and ejects a data stick from the deck. Here. She hands you the stick and a taser gun with masking tape wrapped around the grip. Modify this taser with it and use it on your target. The choke should stop the memory wipe process before it starts. Yeah, I should give her some more. Here's a little something for the effort. Thanks. It'll help, she sighs. I wish every problem was that easy to solve. Custom made weapon. Usable mid range. Deactivates the target's neural wipe and leaves them stunned. The effect takes three rounds to sedate the target. Cool. Alright, that was easy.
I bet now I can go on the other mission, huh? Yep. But you know what? After that, I'm not gonna start a new run just yet. Um, let me go back to the computer, see if maybe I can claim the pay data now. I probably won't be able to until I finish this next run. And go talk to Jen, see if there's anything new with them. Probably not. I'll probably leave off after that. And then I could start the um, next run on the next episode. I kind of hate to start a run when I'm already like a half hour into an episode. Because I know there's basically no chance I'll finish the run within this episode. Let's talk to the crew, see if they have anything new to say. What did you think about the last run? That was some real cloak and dagger shit, wasn't it? Hitting a high-tech weapon research lab, framing a triad for the run. Dealing with other Shadowrunner teams? He shakes his head, smiling. Oh, and to top it all off, there was a laser gun there. A laser gun. If I didn't know any better, I'd think that you enjoyed yourself. Hey, look. As a rule, I don't like running the shadows. Given my choice, I'd walk the straight and narrow. But if I'm going to be criminal, this is the kind that I want to be. The kind with a laser gun. So I gotta admit, I was a little sad when you gave that thing to the other team. I mean, I get why you did it. Reputation is important and all that, but that weapon was an asset, too. He shrugs. I don't know. It was a tough call. Let's hope that you made the right decision. Yeah, I, mean, I hope so, too. Alright. Let's go upstairs. Let's talk to Iz. Rubik, you're back. Need something? I'd like to get to know you better. Tell me something about yourself. Something? Oh, okay, this is the thing. Yeah, I'm not gonna bother her. Any thoughts about that last run? I'm pretty happy that with how that turned out. Mostly because with Ares, the alternative is leaving in a body bag. Especially when you're stealing a prototype laser. Good pay for a good night's work, and that's what this business is all about. You can walk away and get paid. It's been a good job. I kind of wish we kept the laser, because hey, it's a laser. That's awesome. But you did the decent thing, really. You helped those runners out, let them keep their rep, and both of us could get paid. That's a good quality in a team leader, and I'm glad I've got you running the show. You don't like talking about things other than your computer very much, do you? There's a long pause before she responds. When she does, she sounds vaguely hurt. I prefer not to. Nothing personal. It's just the way that I am. There's nothing wrong with that. I just want to know who I'm running with. Don't you? Yes, you're still a mystery to me. It's a long pause. I don't like mysteries, but I do enjoy solving. She turns, gives you her full attention. So here's what we're going to do. I'm going to ask you a question. Something personal. After you've given me an answer, you get to ask me something. Think of it like a game of questions. We take turns until one of us wants to quit. Deal? Deal. You go first. Ask away. She studies your face. Well, let's start off easy. Tell me what you really think about Duncan. He can be a pain in the ass, but he's like a brother to me. Interesting. Her eyes fit fit to the doorway of Gobbit's cabin. The corner of her mouth tilts upwards in a slight smile. And a little familiar. Well, you answered my question. I guess that makes it your turn. How did you and Gobbit meet? Her brow furrows, and after a moment she screws her eyes shut. We met as kids in the walled city. My prison was her playground. 
I'm sorry if that was uncomfortable for you. No, it isn't that. I'll be fine. She shifts her gaze to the octopus. I just have a hard time remembering those days. My childhood is kind of a blur. And that would make it my turn. She pauses, considering. So tell me, what was your connection to Raymond Black? He was like a father to me. Me and Duncan, he got us out of the barrens. In that case, I'm sorry for your loss. Losing the ones that you love is hard. Where did you learn the deck? The Wampua. I lived there for a while after escaping the walled city. The people there were difficult. We didn't get along, but it was a great place to learn. And that brings it back to my turn. She gestures at the cabin walls around you. You enjoy it, don't you? Living like this, working the shadows. Yeah, Raven Black was wrong. This is what I was born to do. She nods slowly. I knew it. I could read it all over you. Your turn again. How long have you been running the shadows with Goblin? That's a good question. It's about four years now. Decent stretch by anyone's reckoning. My turn again. I think my last question for you... You're stuck here, Maroon. You and Duncan both. He's obviously unhappy with the situation. He keeps going on about the things that he left behind. But what about you? Is there anything that you want to get back to? Nothing worth mentioning. Truth be told, I'm enjoying the change of scenery. Nothing? There isn't anything about your old life that you'll miss? I don't know whether to envy you or feel sorry for you. She glances down at the clock on her desk, an antique model with, a physical, with physical hands that look like it was wrenched out of a submarine. A frown spreads across her face. Shit. It's even later than I thought, and I've still got a long way to go before the octopus is fixed. She begins to turn away, her attention fixed on the stack of partially disassembled cyberdecks arrayed in front of her. Hang on, Isabel, you still owe me another question. She stops in place, fidgets, true. Go ahead. I need you to tell me what you can about the walled city. Her voice goes cold. Why? Because I've visited the place, but I know that there's more going on there than I've seen. Her cheeks flush, just like they did the last time. She averts her eyes. No, I'm sorry, but no. Later, maybe, but not now. Alright, Isabel, maybe next time. Blinking, she turns away and buries herself in the octopus displayed inwards. Please excuse me, I have work to do. Hey, again, what's up? Nothing really new to discuss with her. I'm not gonna talk to Ractor now. I don't think there's really much of anything new for me to learn from him. Or got you. I'll talk to them after this next round, of, or once we get the ball rolling on the final bit. I think that's where I'm well, when I'll get new story stuff to talk about with them. All right. So I'm gonna leave off here, and then next time could go directly into the next run. The final run before the end game begins, I guess.